Hi, it's Mark for Ableton Daily. I wanted to talk about removing or reducing pop sounds from the beginning of samples that you've loaded into the sampler instrument inside Ableton Live. And I'm working with an 808 bass drum here. And if you listen closely, it has a pretty loud pop sound at the very beginning. Here we go. I can understand, though, in some instances where you would want to keep that, uh, but for really quiet areas of a mix, uh, you can really hear those pops just stick out and almost too loud. And I'll show you a really easy way you can reduce and eliminate, almost eliminate those pops. But there's a right way to do it and a wrong way. I'm going to show you the right way to do it. So if you have a sample, and this could be anything, any sample that you have, if it's loaded in a sampler, go ahead and go to the waveform on the sample tab and click on the waveform and you can move the mouse up and down and you can zoom in and out of the sample. Go ahead and zoom in to the very beginning of the sample, just like this. And what I want you to do is move this sample start point. You see where it is currently? It's right here at the very top left. Click on it and drag it. And what we're going to do is reposition this to the first zero crossing point of the sample. Okay? It's very important you try to get it at the first zero crossing point. It looks like when they cropped this sample originally, I don't remember where I got it, but it may, it may have came off of a CD or on the internet. Uh, most of the time they will crop it at the correct point, but it doesn't always get it exactly on the point. And so we still have that a really annoying pop sound. But what I want you to do is just grab this flag and move this sample start point to the next zero crossing point. And where that is, is you can see the waveform going up and down and up and down. Well, right where it crosses the center of the sample, right here. Okay, this is zero. This is positive. This is negative. I'll go ahead and click on the flag and drag that right to where it crosses the center point there. Now let's listen to the sample and see how it sounds. So it's greatly reduced. And we still have a little bit of a, sort of a little bit of a bump there, just so we can really tell when that kick drum hits. And it's nice to have that. But I'll go ahead and compare. This is how it was before. And this is after. Okay, and just be very careful on not going to the second zero crossing point because what happens is that we're starting to cut away at the very beginning of the sample. And if it's a kick drum or something like that, you know, we're removing parts of the kick drum that really punch. And so we want to go ahead and just try to find the first zero crossing point, which is right here, and go ahead and leave it, and Sampler will take care of the rest. Another way you can do this, if you're not, uh, if you're having a hard time finding a point where you can remove the pop sound, well, you can select this option here that says snap and you can turn this on and what live will do is automatically find, you know, a zero crossing point for you. But see, I'm turning, I can still hear the pop. So sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you can go ahead and turn this on and you can also adjust the crossfades and uh, it's not working right now because I don't have this uh, set up the way it's supposed to be set up. But I'm going to go ahead and turn off the snap and let me show you another thing that you can do. So I'll just leave it right here and go into the filter and make sure the filter is turned on. And with the default filter type, which is just a morphable 12 dB filter, you can actually grab this little ball here and move this to the left. And what you're doing is, is you're creating this uh, low pass filter effect. So you're cutting off the higher frequencies because the pop sound is just a high frequency. At some instances where you might have the pop sound could have lower frequencies in the pop, um, but it, it, that doesn't look like it's the case here. So I'll just go ahead and try this out now. So this is what it is before. You can really hear that pop there. And as I move this to the left, 
Cutting off the higher frequencies on the filter, you can see that the pop starts to go away. Okay, so there you have it. There are some ways you can uh, reduce or remove the pops from your samples inside the sampler instrument. And hope you enjoyed it. My name's Mark. Hey, if you like the videos, please subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care.